Guys, the cut flower garden is fully planted. My first ever cut flower garden. The other day I planted our cut flower garden. We turned three of our raised beds into a space where I'm just growing a lot of flowers because I really want to do more um, homegrown bouquets all throughout the house all summer long. I want to tell you about all the flowers that we're growing in that garden and then we'll go back a few days and I'll show you the process of planting the garden out. Okay, so let me just show you all the seeds. As you can see, this is a lot of flower varieties. I've never planted so many flowers before in my life. So I planted a number of different poppy varieties. I planted a white, um, Sally's Double Pink, Zyre's Bread Seed. They're all so pretty. Um, another one called Scarlet Peony, which looks like a Scarlet Peony. Another one called Lauren's Grape, which is really pretty as well. A couple of these things I just planted in terms of pollinators and they're not actually cut flowers, but I want to include them here. Things like forage. Um, I planted calendula. This is a remembrance mix. So it's a lot of different um, types and colors all mixed together in a packet. So I planted queen lime zinnia with blush, apricot blush zinnia, zinderella peach zinnia, Persian carpet, a Oklahoma mix by um, Territorial Sea Company and Taki's Choice Mix Zinnia by Baker Creek. And then I planted um, a couple different kinds of yarrow as well. This one is Summer Berries by Fruition Seed. And then um, we have Parker's Variety Yarrow, which is a bright yellow. And I'm really excited about this one. I planted Nasturtium, which isn't a cut flower, but just including it in this list. Straw flower, love, love, love straw flower. Um, some things by Florette Farm, like flowering tobacco and silene. Both of these are really nice fillers for bouquets, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how, how they turn out. A couple of varieties of Cosmos, Buddha's Hand, which is an orange variety, and then Apricot Lemonade from Baker Creek, which I'm really looking forward to. I planted some sunflowers. I had some seeds from my friend Natalie over at Hey It's a Good Life. Mongolian sunflowers that she gave to me. So large sunflowers, six to 10 feet tall. So I planted these, amaranth, valentine sunflowers, uh, Mexican sunflowers, and rudbeckia as well, which is actually a perennial. I planted cress, which is also a nice filler, also from Florette Farm. Facelia, it's a native flowering plant with lavender blossoms. Two different kinds of scabiosa. One is Black Beauty scabiosa and the other is Merlot Red. Really beautiful varieties. And then something called Crespedia, which I'm still trying to germinate and it's not going so well. So we'll see. We'll see if I get any from them. Now that I've told you about all the varieties I'm planting, let's go back, what was it, two days ago, three days ago, and take a look at the garden where I planted and get to see cute baby Kai hanging out in the garden with me. It is finally time to get my first ever cut flower garden planted. I actually already have some things in the ground which I want to show you. But we're going to head on over to our cut flower garden. I'm going to bring over all my starts, tell you about my plans for this space, and bring you along with me as I plant it out for the very first time. First things first, I gotta water the beds because they're super dry and I don't want to plant in dry soil. And that means moving this 200 foot hose all the way over to the raised bed garden. So, give me a second. It doesn't really matter While I wish it for something better I try to fix things
Yes. The area behind me is going to be the cut flower garden. We have three raised beds. Half of one of them is already dedicated to raspberries. Another half has dahlia tubers in it. As you can see behind me, this bed right here is almost fully planted with direct sown seeds. But I'm going to fill in the empty spaces with some of my transplants here. And let me show you what I have going on in this bed so far. I have some sporadically germinated poppies over there. What happened was the cats dig in these beds and they dug up some of the poppies that had germinated. So I have like four or five different kinds of poppies, those three rows right there. And then I have some borage. I have a couple dahlia tubers from fruition seeds right in here. Some calendula, these are all just like weeds that germinated. I think a lot of it is tomatoes that I need to thin and pull out. And here, I believe this is cress but I'm not positive. I direct sowed it and I didn't label it. So I believe that's what I meant to plant there. I know I wanted to plant Rudbeckia somewhere in here. So it's either in one of these rows here, but I'm not quite sure. And then I have Calendula right there. And this is a weed that I just can't seem to get rid of. It just keeps growing back like crazy. So here's what I have to choose from. I have a number of different kinds of zinnia plants that I started from seed. I have two different kinds of cosmos. I have some marigolds in here, um, as well as some salmon rose zinnia. Here are my three eucalyptus plants. See, what else do I have? I have echinacea, yarrow, straw flower, silene, and flowering tobacco, which are fillers for arrangements and then a California poppy. Now this is the bed with all of my dahlias. I have 20 dahlia varieties all together, and then to my surprise, a couple actually came back to life. You can't really see them, but they're coming up right in these areas over here. And this row right here, I have gladiolas, and I can fill the rest of the area with some zinnias and cosmos. Now when I first started gardening, I had zero interest in flowers. I actually didn't even plant any flowers at all my first season. Maybe, maybe I did a few, I don't remember. And then my second season, I became more interested. My third season, last year, I was really excited about flowers and I planted poppies and straw flowers and all kinds of different zinnias. And I just loved the beauty that they brought, but I didn't spend really any time bringing in any cut flowers for bouquets in the house. This year, I wanted to up my game a lot and I'm planting a lot more flowers. I also have invested in some rose bushes and peonies and dahlias, and I'm planting a couple more areas of flowers in the garden as well beyond this cut flower garden. I have a little area in the garden that I'm gonna be planting some flowers, and then we're going to turn a row in our front yard, right by the road, into an annual and perennial flower bed so that when you drive by our house you're just greeted with lots of flowers. Now I don't know exactly what changed within me to help me decide that I love flowers but I think once you once you get into gardening you just expand more and more into new things and fall in love with different plants and different different varieties like I didn't used to like tomatoes now I love tomatoes and I eat tomato sandwiches all the time I wasn't interested in fruit trees at all when we moved here. I remember my dad told me, you should plant some apple trees. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and now I'm obsessed with fruit trees. And my sister loves flowers. And I think her love for flowers was kind of contagious to me. I have always known she's loved flowers, but I think over the years, maybe just seeing her love for flowers just really encouraged me to fall in love with them as well. If you feel like I'm not really into that yet. That's okay, just allow yourself to be open to new things and you'll find that you'll fall in love with, with new things from the garden as the years go on as I have. This is kind of an overwhelming amount of plants and it's really hard to know where to start, but I'm just gonna kind of jump in. Um, I decided actually I'm gonna plant the eucalyptus in this bed because this bed gets the most sun and eucalyptus really likes to be dry. And then the zinnias and cosmos get really tall so I can kind of just like plant them in all three of these beds. Could you love these anymore? I mean, Look how beautiful these plants are. I did not start these from seed. I got them from a local nursery, but next year I want to start more from seed. They're just so beautiful. I can't wait to put these in arrangements. You gonna sit in the shade while I plant some flowers? Hi! Come here, come over in the camera. Hi! Can I kiss you? Do you like the eucalyptus? You want this? Diggy, diggy, diggy. Dig it, dig it, dig it. Dig it, dig it, dig it.
these are straw flower and I'm gonna go ahead and plant these in this bed as well. I'm gonna go ahead and plant these zinnias in this bed as well. dent in this tray but I still have a bunch left all that tray still left so we still have ways to go but time to visit with this little guy oh you have a basil with you hi oh my gosh you're goofy you're sitting all by yourself <laughs> basil I'm not praising you oh she is Double. Baby down. I love this spot right here. Baby down. Tummy time outside. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go plant a few more things in the garden and then we are gonna call it done. So let's get these flowers planted ASAP. So I'm gonna work on getting the silene and the flowering tobacco planted over here in this bed real quick. This has become like my filler bed for arrangements. That's why I'm putting the silene and flowering tobacco. Finally, we just have this section in front of the raspberries and I'm gonna fill this in with some of the remaining zinnias and some cosmos. That is my six month old. Guys, the cut flower garden is fully planted. My first ever cut flower garden. We've got cosmos and zinnias, dahlias and poppies. We have some filler plants like eucalyptus, silene and flowering tobacco. We have gladiolas, and lots of raspberries. Actually, raspberry canes can be used as a filler, which I learned from, um, you can't eat the grass, so. I guess it kind of works in a cut flower garden. And then um, I have sunflowers and some other tall flowers like Mexican sunflowers. I'm also gonna plant out an area of Rudbeckia. So I'm gonna do that over in a little bed I have behind the hookah culture bed. And as well, I'm gonna be doing that in the front garden that we're gonna, that we're gonna prep, um, which I'll show you in another video. But for now, the cut flower garden is planted. Let me show you it real quick and we'll wrap it up. There's bed number one, we have the dahlias, those are all those pink tags, the eucalyptus, and then straw flower, zinnia, cosmos, and marigolds. In this bed, we have gladiolas, cosmos, and zinnias of all different kinds, and then the, the raspberry canes, and then some dahlias that have popped up here and there. And then finally, in this bed, we have different kinds of poppies, borage, um, some dahlias, and then we have the flowering tobacco and silene, which are those right there and then um, crest, which is a filler, and some zinnias, and then at the very end is calendula. Oh, and a random volunteer potato. Finally, let's say hi to Malachi. Give me the camera, mama. Give it to me. <laughs> say bye, Malachi. Say bye to our friends. See you guys next time. <laughs>